What's going on YouTube? It's your girl Monique Nicole and I am back with another video. Before we get started, if you are new to my channel, please, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel. Please click that subscribe button down below. And while you're at it, go ahead and thumbs up this video. All right, show your girl some love. All right, all right. So today, today we are going to discuss the long awaited Fresh Prince of Bel-Air reunion special. It aired, I think, last week on HBO Max. Um, it was about an hour and 15 minutes. Let me just say, I enjoyed it from top to bottom, start to finish. I truly, truly enjoyed the special. It was very nostalgic. It was even emotional for me. Um, but it was beautiful being able to just look back at just even the behind the scenes stuff and just seeing like the crowd participation because you know they were filming in front of a live studio audience um just seeing like never before seen clips and just different things like that and just hearing the cast reflect um on their time on the show and just what the show meant to them and what it meant for the culture and just you know Fresh Prince of Bel-Air for me as a kid you know, it was just a show. It was just like another show that I loved. Like I was, gosh, probably five, six, seven at the time when the show was on. And I didn't know how big of an impact it would have. You know what I mean? We were just watching TV. We knew that it was awesome. We knew that we liked it, but you know, who would have thought it would have had this impact on the world? So I know they did not know what impact it would have. And you know, I still watch the show till this day, you know what I'm saying? So uh, it was beautiful. It was beautiful seeing the whole cast. It was so nice seeing everyone from um, Jeffrey to Ashley um, to Alfonso who plays Carlton and even um, Jazz. Um, that and little Nikki they even brought um little Nikki he's obviously grown now but he was a little kid at the time um so it was awesome again just watching them all be reunited very nostalgic um so let's see and of course I have my notes guys so don't judge me I have my handy dandy laptop right here I have to write notes down I have to because I'm getting older now my memory ain't that sharp like it used to be okay so do not judge me um so moving on the segment on James Avery uh, yeah, the segment on James Avery <sighs> very touching uh very emotional I definitely cried um, I cried watching them cry, you know, he was an awesome actor and we fell in love with him. He was Uncle Phil, you know, to all of us, you know, he was Uncle Phil. So it's like, you know, you watch the show for years and one of the main characters pass away. It's really sad. Like, even when I watch the reruns now, it's just I, I think about it. I'm just like, damn it. He's not here with us anymore. Like, he's not here to see this. And, you know, it sucks. He died seven years ago. And, God, it would have been amazing to have seen him be a part of this um, reunion. You know, he was definitely missed by fans and viewers. And I know the cast, you know, miss him. It was really, really beautiful to hear the impact that he had on everyone, um, especially Will Smith. Um, huge impact. You know, they talked about how he was such a, a great actor. I think he's from the theater, you know, so he's he's big on theater and arts and it, it's a real craft for him. So he took it very seriously and you know was there also as a guide and help to will smith who was not an actor i loved hearing um how the show got started and how much of a impact quincy jones had on the show i mean i i knew that he um started the show as well but just hearing it again and hearing the details of how it happened and when how will smith was put on the spot to like audition in front of all these people like i can't imagine how nerve-wracking um that would have been i would have been filled with anxiety so you know sometimes in life when you're given a shot you just have to freaking take it you know what i mean because will told quincy jones he was like all right well i need like two weeks and he was like two weeks huh well let me just tell you every single executive that could make this show happen is in that room right now 
uh he was like all right well give me 10 minutes he was like okay 10 minutes we got an audition so hearing that story was really nice um I loved how honest they were and how honest Will was about the fact that he was not an actor and how the first season he struggled tremendously and um <laughs> One funny thing that he did was when he was in a scene, he would mumble like the other person's lines. So, you know, obviously I'm not an actress, but when you're acting or when you're going over lines, you know, um, he was reading the other person's lines. So he knew his line, he knew their line, that person's line, he knew everybody's line. So that was funny. It was really cute banter to see. Now to the meat and potatoes the part that everyone is talking about the part that kept us on the edge of our seat the moment where janet hubert aka the original aunt viv um had a sit down talk with will smith this was the first time that they have seen each other and spoken to each other in 27 years I'll say it again, 27 years, almost 30 years, people, almost 30 years. Um, and they had not spoken to each other. Um, they've thrown shade towards each other. They've talked crap about each other, but they have not had an adult conversation or have seen each other in almost 30 years. So once this was, I guess, promoted, and fans and everyone knew that Janet was going to be a part of it. I definitely think that um, piqued even more interest to viewers because it's like, holy crap, it's been almost 30 years. There's been a lot of contention between the two. Um, Janet has talked pretty badly about Will Smith over the years, even other cast members. I know that she spoke um, negatively and said some comments about Alfonso aka Carlton's kids. I think kids are off limits. I don't know why she would even speak on children. But nonetheless, they had a beef y'all that lasted damn near a lifetime. And they finally sat down and spoke. Um, I have a lot of notes. So you're gonna see me looking at them because it was a lot to digest. And it was it was a lot. I, I cried. It was very, very emotional for me. I have all different types of thoughts and feelings about the situation between Will Smith and Janet Hubert. So I wrote some stuff down. I wrote down what she said, what he said. I'm going to give you my commentary about all of it. So season three of the show, okay? Or I guess what they're about to embark on season three. Um, Janet Hubert was actually pregnant in real life. So if you remember the show, um, Aunt Viv was pregnant on the show with little Nikki, um, but Janet was actually really pregnant in real life. So she explained that when she's pregnant, to her husband um, was unemployed at the time, so she was the breadwinner. And three, she was in an abusive relationship so the marriage was not good so basically home life was terrible also she was pregnant so you can only imagine all what she was going through mentally and emotionally and physically so sister was going through a lot so she admitted that at that time yes her behavior did change she was not as talkative as friendly and social and jokey jokey on set like she normally was okay so that made some people feel a little uncomfortable, especially Will. This is what I will say to that, because I know a lot of people are judging Will. People have judged Will. Um, you know, I have a side eye towards Will for sure. But let's note, he was 21 years old during this time. How emotionally intelligent were you at 21? um i can tell you at 21 i was not as smart as i am now not as intellectual as i am now not as emotionally intelligent as i am now so 
you know, listening to Will Smith. And then I will say also listening to his Red Table talk that he did where he he spoke a lot about his childhood trauma and how it was really important for him to seek approval from people, especially people who he viewed as a parental um, figure. And to be honest, on set, James Avery, who played Uncle Phil, you know, and Janet, who played on Viv, they were parental figures to them. And he really looked up to them as actors, you know, in Hollywood and just being a part of this um, field that he's trying to embark on. So, you know, he really looked up to them. So in his 21 year old, naive, probably arrogant mind, um, Aunt Viv didn't like him. Aunt Viv was trying to treat him differently. You know, he even said it, I think I wrote it down. He said it, um, yeah, he thought Janet hated him. He said that to Janet. I thought you hated me. And <clears throat> that is intimidating for a 21-year-old to feel for someone who was older than him, older than them. Nonetheless, Let's just say her behavior changed. Some people didn't like it. And when it came around for season three, I think I want to, I feel like it's season four, but we'll say season three because that's what she said. Season three, they offered her a crappy deal. They basically told her, you'll be working for two months. That's it. Two months of work, which is not a lot right because the show filmed for much longer than two months let's just say that but for her role they offered her a deal where she would only be filming for two months and also she could not work anywhere else now i don't know if they meant she could not work anywhere else during those two months or she could not work anywhere else period meaning you can't get no work nowhere else so if they meant that Either way, it's a crappy deal, but it is a really crappy deal if they told her you can't work anywhere else, period, like for the next year or so. Like if it was like that, that is terrible to do to somebody. Um, so she explained and confirmed, you know, the misconception is that she got fired, but she never got fired. She turned away from the show. She turned down the deal. She's like, I can't accept this. And they said, well, sorry, peace. We're going to have to, you know, replace you with somebody else. <sighs> this is where I'm conflicted because I'm like, what would I have done? You know, having self-respect for yourself and knowing your worth is extremely important. Extremely important. Pride is also important too. It can be good and bad. If I was in her situation, I was pregnant. My husband was out of work. And I'm in an abusive relationship. I probably would have been so desperate that I would have taken it. But I, that's just me, though. That's just me. I don't know. You know, I can't say if she did the right thing or not. I really don't know. Only she knows if that was the right thing. Um, I feel bad for her because I feel like, darn it, like... If I'm on a job for two years and I'm an, I'm amazing, I get along with everybody, everybody loves me, we're a one big happy family, and then I'm off for a few months or so, I don't know if it was a year or how long she was off. Let's just say I'm off for like six to eight months. I am just not the same. I'm quiet. I'm not engaging with my coworkers. I'm whatever. I would just really, really hope that someone had it in them to pull me to the side and say, hey, Monique, you know, are you okay? You've been acting a little different. Is everything okay? I just want to make sure you're good. I would have, I would hope someone would do that because you just don't know what people are going through. And I wasn't there. I don't know if someone did. And again, to be fair, she never told anyone what she was going through, which I get. Who really wants to air their dirty laundry? No one. But if my job is being jeopardized, I probably would have said something. You know, hey, maybe if you want to leave out the abuse part, sure, because who's really going to want to admit that? But the fact that I'm pregnant, 
and my husband ain't got no job that's just me though i can't i can't say what was right or wrong but i'm just trying to look at things from everyone's point of view and i trust me i feel for janet i feel terrible for her um she got branded difficult difficult and professional you know she lost her career um her family disowned her because she ruined the family name which i'm looking at her family like what the fuck is wrong with you because what the who does that who does that so she lost everything and then you know since fresh print she has not had any major roles so it's just like you know, she lost everything, her career, I mean, everything over misunderstandings and just bad communication. And, you know, Will, Will Smith admitted that, you know, he was young. He was not as sensitive, not as aware of things as he should have been. But, you know, as he's gotten older now, of course, and has kids and been through stuff, he definitely can look back and see how he made things on set a little bit difficult for Janet that came out of his own mouth he admitted that um let me see if there's any other important details um let's see let's see let's see yeah okay one of the main things that she said that really stuck out to me and I think everyone was you know when she said Calling a black woman difficult in Hollywood is the kiss of death. That line struck me like, oh my gosh, because it's so true. First of all, forget Hollywood, calling a black woman difficult in any capacity, in any field, in any line of work, in any way, shape or form, calling a black woman difficult is the kiss of death. Okay, period. It doesn't matter if I'm in Hollywood, if I have a corporate job, if I'm an accountant, if I'm an administrative assistant, it doesn't matter what the fuck I'm doing. If I'm working at freaking Burger King or Chick-fil-A, if I am branded the angry black woman or the difficult black woman, that's the kiss of death. My job is going to be gone or at least jeopardized. So... I felt her and yes, you know, again, the misconception was that she was fired. We all thought she was fired. I thought obviously when it all happened, I was very, very young. But as years went on, you start to hear things as you get older. And the whole point was people thought she was fired. Excuse me. And she wasn't even fired. She walked away. So things were already kind of pinned against her. And, you know, of course, everyone's going to side be on Will Smith's side. And... This is not to say that it was a situation of like, let's follow the leader, whatever Will says goes. That might have been the case with the execs. But as far as the cast, I feel like she may have rubbed the entire cast the wrong way. Again, I understand 100% what she was going through. I can empathize wholeheartedly. However, I'm going to play devil's advocate she said in the interview or with the sit, the sit down, she said, gosh, what did she say? She said, I was not unprofessional on set. I just stopped talking to everyone because I did not know who to trust. Okay, I can understand that. However, you have to be aware of how that comes off to other people. If I work with you and we have been honky dory, cool, cool, buddy, buddy, copacetic, and then all of a sudden you stop talking to everybody and you just buy yourself solo dolo in your dressing room and you no longer conversing or no banter, no ha ha ha, no warm and fuzzies, I'm going to think something is wrong. Like I, there is a chance that I'm going to take it as shade. Or as, you don't like me. I mean, I'm just being real. Like, everyone wants to come on Will and trust me. Trust me. I am judging Will. <laughs> he is to blame. He is a big part of this for the blame. But I'm also being fair in the sense of if I am 
20 a 21 year old kid hell if i'm i'm 30 years old right now if i'm 30 freaking years old and someone who is always like in my space all of a sudden starts to treat me differently and doesn't treat me nice and is ignoring me or not talking to me i'm going to i may take that a certain way so you know if she was doing that to everyone I'm sure Will was not the only person who felt slighted by that. I'm sure he's not the only person that was like, dang, do you not like us no more? You don't want to be here no more? You know what I'm saying? So it just goes both ways. I wish someone asked if she was all right. And I wish she could have seen it from their point of view as well. But sometimes when you are in a shit storm, it is very hard to see anything else but that so you know again i'm extremely empathetic to her um nonetheless it was a beautiful sit down it was long overdue they both apologized to each other for everything and all the nasty things they said towards each other over the years because there has been a lot of shade throwing honey especially from miss janet janet was the main one saying negative mean things about will smith and stuff but they buried the hatchet. It was beautiful. I hope people learn from this. Like he's like Will Smith said, like if anything, I hope people can look at this and, and take something from it. Don't be that person that's holding a grudge for damn near 30 years. That goes for Will and Janet because they both they both played a part. You know, I don't think one person was 100% right or wrong. They both played a part. So don't be that person that's holding a grudge. You do not have to be besties with anybody if you no longer want to be um, or if you no longer want to have someone a part of your life. You don't have to. But if it's something that was like a misunderstanding or just come on, let it go. Talk about it and then go separate ways. But just don't have such contention and just hatred for someone. It's just not good. It's not healthy. And like Will said, it would look crazy. He In this world, he is Will Smith. He is that nice, outgoing, funny guy who preaches about positivity and this and that. So how does it look to have a beef of 30 years with someone? He said it himself. It looks crazy. So I'm really glad that he has grown and matured and she's grown and matured and they can reconcile. I, I, it was beautiful. I cried. You know, it was it was really touching. Um, overall, I will say again, the reunion was amazing. I do wish we got a little bit more. I wish we got a little bit more. So I wish that we got more of like a what was life like after Fresh Prince. We all know what life was like for Will Smith. He blew up. Like even during filming um, Fresh Prince, he filmed Bad Boys with Martin Lawrence. Like he was already becoming that movie star Will Smith. Like I think he did, did he do Independence Day too? I, listen, he was already becoming Will Smith, the movie star. So he was already blowing up. I would have loved to have known what was life like for Jeffrey, I, I don't know the actor's real name in real life, so forgive me, but the man that played Jeffrey, I would have loved to have known what was life like for him after the show. Um, James Avery, I mean, everyone, I would have loved to have known because they, they talked a lot about how sad it was the last days on set and how just emotional it was for everyone. And they had been um, together for six years and they were like family. So I would have loved to have heard what life was like for everyone the hard times the good times did they struggle to find work you know what work did they get like I would have loved to have heard that um from the cast I also would have liked even though Janet sat down with them for a little bit I I, I would have liked um more conversation with her and the cast I also would have loved to have seen just maybe a three three to five minute part of both Aunt Viv sitting down and talking to each other. You know what I mean? Um, that was the first time they met, you know what I mean? Which I get it. Why would they need to meet, you know, with how everything happened? There would, it, there would be no reason for them to meet. So I'm not surprised, but I would have loved to have heard from Daphne, who played the new Aunt Viv, the second Aunt Viv. I would have loved to have heard from her 
what that was like for her coming in, having big shoes to fill, even though the shit ended badly. Uh, Janet Hubert murked that character of Aunt Viv. So it was hard. You know, she had big shoes. Daphne had big shoes to fill. So I would have loved to have heard, you know, what that was like for her. Nonetheless, it was an amazing um special i enjoyed it i will watch it two three four more times it was amazing i want all of like the major 90s sitcom shows sorry to do a reunion we don't necessarily need a, a, a reboot but a reunion so hello martin please i would love to see a martin uh reunion but anyway guys Thanks for watching. Again, thumbs up this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Please subscribe to my channel and help your girl out. Um, and thank you so much for watching. And I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.